What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here, and we are going to do another instantaneous rate of change question. So we have to find the instantaneous rate of change at an x value of 3 for these two functions. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a different method for both of these. So let's start off with this one. So there's a bunch of different methods we can use. We can do following interval, preceding interval, centered interval. Let's do the centered interval for this one. So as a recap, how do we do the centered interval? Well, we take the x value at which we are finding the instantaneous rate of change at. We pick a value that's close to it to the left of it. So something like, let's say, 2.99. And then we pick an x value that's very close to it to the right of it. So something like 3.01. And now what we do with these two x values is we find the average rate of change between these two x values for this function. So basically our instantaneous rate of change would be f of 3.01 minus f of 2.99 all over 3.01 minus 2.99. So f of 3.01, we would plug in 3.01 for the x here, and then get that value, and then f of 2.99, same thing, we would plug in 2.99 for the x, and get that value there. And then when you subtract these and the denominator, those are just numbers. So when you end up doing all that in your calculator, so f of 3.01 is 3.3196, f of 2.99 is 3.3136, 3.01 minus 2.99 is 0 0.02, and then when you uh, simplify that in your calculator, you end up getting 0 0.3. So that's the instantaneous rate of change, or the approximate instantaneous rate of change, for this function at an x value of 3. Okay, let's move on to part B, and for part B, let's use the following interval method. So the following interval, what does it do? It takes the x value that you are finding the instantaneous rate of change at. So in this case, x is equal to 3. And then it picks an x value that's very close to the right of it. So let's use 3.01 again. And now what you do is you find the average rate of change between these two. So The approximate instantaneous rate of change would be f of 3.01 minus f of 3 all over 3.01 minus 3. And that would be for this function. Notice how for none of these we haven't used the difference quotient because we haven't really gone over how to use the difference quotient with functions that have a radical or exponential function. So whenever you receive functions like this, usually to find this instantaneous rate of change is something like this, you'll have to use either the centered interval, following interval, or preceding interval methods. And then when you further simplify this, so f of 3.01, plugging in 3.01 for x here, you get 61.8934. f of 3, plugging in 3 for x, you end up getting 61 and then the denominator simplifies to 0 0.01, and then simplifying this in your calculator, you end up getting 89.34. So that is the instantaneous rate of change for this function at an x value of 3. So we are done the question, and we found the instantaneous rate of change, or the approximate instantaneous rate of change for both of these with a different method. This one was the centered interval, this one was the following interval.